Hi, my name is Martin James Bartlett and this is my masterclass on Chanson de Matin. Now, this piece is very sweet, it's very beautiful, but actually its original version is for violin and piano. Therefore, I think it's important to really think of your right hand as a violin or a singer, perhaps, and really enjoy the beautiful melody and make it sing, because that will make this piece come off the page and make the adjudicators be very interested in your playing. The left hand, however, I would keep quite quiet because it's only the accompaniment. So just like this. Now on that topic, I also wanted to talk about pedaling because I know on the score it says with pedal, but it doesn't quite show you where to pedal. And I think actually one pedal per bar seems to work quite well. Up to there. Then I would suggest actually no pedal so that we can get this staccato line in the right hand. Now I would suggest in the writ bar that you actually pedal the first crotchet and then you pedal the two quavers in the left hand. So that will be a total of three pedalling marks in that bar. Also, we have a very nice crescendo before that rip bar, which I would really enjoy to broaden the warmth of your sound. And be careful with this little grace note in the right hand that it's, it's still part of the melody, it's still very beautiful and it needs uh, to be taken care of, not done or thrown away in a sense. So perhaps something like this. And then we get to our first dynamic change, which has a very, very juicy harmony underneath, which I think you could really indulge in. We then move again to the relative minor, and this time the melody interest is in the left hand. So we really want the right hand turning into the accompaniment and the left hand becoming this blossoming melody. And with that melody, we have to shape it in a beautiful way. Therefore, in the third bar of the melody, we have these phrasing marks, which mean strong and weak. Then we pass the melody over into our right hand and really enjoy that change between the melody of the left hand, the melody in the right hand. This next section is marked allagando, which means sort of dragging, it's slightly heavier, and that allows you to find the space that you need to do this big crescendo where we reach the climax of the piece, a forte. Make sure that all of these chromatic lines, this, this moving down the keyboard, are done with a very legato touch. There should be no gaps, no air between the notes. And then we have our allegando, our slower section, and then we must immediately go back to our tempo, which is exactly the speed we started at the beginning. And in the left hand, we have these little staccato passages which make sure the staccato is not too clipped, it's not too grabbed, but it's just 
pushed. And really enjoy the crescendo into the MF. And then we have a little phrase in the left hand that I think is very nice to show. When we reach the MF, show this beautiful descending line. So those two final chords, the first one is marked piano, the second one is marked pianissimo, so the first one is a little louder. Allow yourself a bit more warmth on the first one so that you can do a really beautiful echo. And I always find it's very hard to play chords like this with all the fingers together. Therefore, one thing I do is I actually breathe out sometimes when playing the chord, and I find that actually that allows my body to relax and actually all the notes to sound simultaneously. Now if you have used the pedal on this final chord, I think it's very important to either remove the pedal at exactly the same time you take off the keys, or to remove the pedal first while still holding the notes and then lift them. Because on some pianos, you will get a noise of the dampers lifting off the strings and it will make this noise that kind of goes zzz, and that can really destroy the mood, the beautiful mood that you've created throughout this work. 